How's it going? This is Bronson here from Swalpro. If you're watching this video, it is most likely that you have picked up a cell connection error or Delta V error on your Swalpro EVP C1 XR charger. So what I'm going to do today is to assist you with those error messages as well as give you information as to why you're potentially seeing these error messages and if it is going to be recommended for you to purchase a new battery. First up, we're just going to look at the software on the charger. The older unit had software version 3.16. You will know what version of software you have when you switch your charger on. The first thing it does is it displays the version. It says Swalpro 4.0. So it's in extremely important that you have either 4.0, 4.1 or 4.2 because that software will allow you to be able to navigate through the different battery type settings and the different menu options whereas 3.16 will do an auto charge. We do not want you as the client to have the auto charge settings. We change all the software but some of the units have got all the software on so if you have a version 3.16 communicate with us and we will send you the software package to update your charger. Alright, so first thing to take note of is the batteries. Discussion on the batteries. These two types of batteries we offer to power up the Swalpro Splash, Splash Drone 3 Plus. So one being your lithium ion high voltage or your LIHV, it's an 8000 milliamp LIHV battery. Or the LiPo battery, obviously there's different types. Uh, we distribute now currently these black 6000 milliamp LiPo batteries. But there's different batteries that are available and most clients also send, tend to purchase aftermarket batteries which are also LiPos which will be compatible. So long as they're four cell and can fit into the chain of the drone, they will power the drone. Things to take note of when it comes to these batteries. These batteries are extremely sensitive to charging. What does this mean? This means that this battery when purchased off the shelf is at a nominal voltage or an equilibrium voltage so that there's no current reactivity going on here that could compromise this battery. So that specific voltage needs to be maintained after use. So if you are not going to be using your drone for a long duration of time, you need to put your batteries in storage mode using the storage function on the charger. This is available in the storage or the how to charge video, so check that out if you don't know how to do it. But please note that the easiest way to compromise these batteries is to not put them in storage mode. If the battery is left fully charged, the cells will react and the battery is essentially going to swell up and you will have a battery that looks like a rugby ball. If your battery swells up, discard of it immediately as it's a complete um, risk, a fire risk, so don't keep swollen batteries. The other thing that could happen is if you fly this battery completely flat, and you leave it below the storage threshold, the battery will self-decay due to lack of reactivity within the battery cells. So don't leave a battery laying flat, because a flat battery is just as dangerous as a fully charged battery. You need to maintain the storage voltage. On the lithium ion half voltage, it is going to be a 14% charge, and then on the LiPo batteries, it's going to be a 50% charge charger will do this for you. Recommendation, the quickest way to put into storage would be to fly your drone close to the storage voltage of 15.4 volts and then pop it on the charger. But please make sure if you do not do this, your battery is going to be compromised. Now we're in a situation where you might have gone fishing and you utilized and uh, you left the battery um, dead or flat and it's now no longer picking up on the charger. When you plug it in, you put it on the charger, you plug in the balance lead and the XT60 connector. You navigate to the settings of lithium ion high voltage, balance charge, 4 cell, 8000. We charge these batteries at 5 amps. When you press start, and it throws you a battery check cell connection error. Now what does this mean? This means that this battery after the last use was left at a very, very low voltage and it has slowly self-decayed and is now no longer being able it's no longer able for the charger to pick up the voltage of this battery because the internal resistance is dropped. So the battery has no charge in it. This charger can't pick it up on a balanced charge. So what we're going to attempt to do now is called a force charge. The word force shouldn't be taken lightly. This is extremely dangerous. Do not do this and leave your battery. This is something you need to do while attending to the battery constantly. So what we will do 
will navigate back to the main menu. We'll go to Allah HV. We will now charge. We will not balance charge as we usually do, but we will do a direct charge. Put the same parameters of the battery for cell 8000 milliamp. However, this time we won't do it at 5 amp, we'll just do it at 2 amp as we want to do this slowly as this is extremely dangerous for the battery. Um, it can be a fire hazard. And now what we will do lastly is we will unplug the balance lead. So we are just charging with the XT60 connector. This is called a force charge. So what we will do is we will now, we've set it, direct charge 4 cell 8002 amps. Obviously that will change depending on what battery you have in front of you. If it's a LiPo, you will then adapt it to the LiPo settings. Hold in the start button and you will notice the battery is now charging. If we turn our attention to the current battery voltage, it's at 12.3 volts. Now what does this mean? This means that 14 volts is the lowest threshold for this charger to read. So you as the client now are bringing the voltage slowly back up to a recognizable voltage for this charger to be able to perform a balanced charge. So what you'll do is you'll watch it, you'll stand by, always feel the battery if it's getting any warmer, if it starts getting warmer, stop the process, so it'll feel for temperature, and then you'll watch the screen until you get closer to a recognizable voltage, which will be around 14.6 to 14.8 volts. When we reach that, we will stop and then perform the normal balance charge as we usually would. So the battery has now come up to 14.8 volts as you can see on the screen. What we're going to do is we're going to stop the charge. Sorry, we're going to stop the charge. We're going to plug the, X, uh, the balance lead back in. So the balance lead is plugged back in. Now you've got both cables plugged in again. Now you're going to navigate to the balance charge setting. The only parameter we're going to change is going to be the amps. We're not going to charge at 5 amps. As we mentioned, this battery is already compromised. So we're going to take it easy the first charge and we'll take it down to approximately 3 amps. Press start and the battery will start charging. This will not occur every time or you might not be this lucky every time. Um, you cannot do this often with your battery. You've got once, max twice that you can try and bring your voltage back up on the battery. So if you're in an event where this happened and it starts charging and you're going to use the battery, charge it slowly on 3 amps full. If you're going to store the battery, put it to 15.4 volts and then stop the charge and put it on the storage setting. Alright, so if you did, as we mentioned earlier, you put it on the direct charge, you brought it up to about 15 volts or 14.8 volts. You've now plugged the balance lead and you put it back on balance charge and you press start and you notice balance delta V. Delta V is an indication that the cells inside this battery are unbalanced. Unbalanced meaning that they're not currently on the same voltage. So you have four cells in the battery, two or three or one or th are in different voltages. This means that this battery's likelihood of being charged is compromised. This battery is now compromised. The, the attempt to get the voltage back up was negative and it never worked. What you can do in the situation, if you really want to take a chance, please note again this is extremely dangerous, is now to do the same charge as we mentioned before, a direct charge on 2 amps and you'll start and you'll charge this battery full. But you are now force charging a battery and this is extremely dangerous. So only attempt this if you are going to watch the battery. Another area we can sometimes see on the charger, connection break. So what this, well, what this means is this means firstly check that your battery is plugged in. If your battery is not plugged in, we'll give this error. Or if your battery is plugged in and you're noticing this error, it's a possibility that one of your cables are damaged. So what the suggestion always is try and charge one of your other batteries, if you've got another battery, to inspect the cables. But if you notice this message appearing on all your batteries, the likelihood of one of your cables being compromised is high. Alright guys, so just to summarize what we had a look at today, obviously we're dealing with all the necessary errors that become present on the Swalpro charger. If you are seeing this, please note that the likelihood of you compromising your battery has already taken place and this isn't a permanent fix, this is just a temporary fix to assist you to get that last few flights in before you can purchase a new battery. At any point, if you notice a swollen battery, 
Do not attempt to charge as this battery can explode. So do not charge a swollen battery. Even if the charger works and it starts charging, do not charge a swollen battery. The way in which you can also check your battery is squash it, feel that it feels solid and not squishy in texture. A battery should be firm and solid like this one over here and square in shape. If the charger gives you a cell connection error and you attempt the direct charge and you're successful and the voltage starts coming up, you're regulating the temperature, it doesn't get warm, it gets to 15, 15 volts, you change back over to a balanced charge and you have a successful charge, then it is possible that you might have saved your battery. Just be mindful of it and focus when you use that battery the next time because the performance in the beginning will be less than what it should be. If you do this and it starts throwing a delta V error, that is an indication that all the cells are at different voltages and you should discard that battery. Do not attempt to charge it. You can force charge it, but if you force charge it full, one of the cells can explode if it overcharges. So be mindful of that. This is, as I mentioned, not a permanent fix. This is something temporary if you're in a situation where you need to get one or two baits in the water and your battery is giving an error. The last connection error is your connection break error. If you're seeing that pop up, check that you're plugging in both your cables. If both your cables are plugged in and everything looks right but it's still doing it, the likelihood, and all your batteries are doing it, the likelihood that one of your cables is not making a good contact and you're going to have to replace one of your cables. Alright guys, I hope this video assists you and happy flying.